I think something you said about how we were supposed to be Malayans and then we were supposed to be Malaysians and then suddenly we were supposed to be Singaporeans. I, I didn't say that. Lee Kuan Yew said. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. The plan was not to be your own country, right? The plan was to be a very successful city in the Malaysian Federation. And then within a year, 18 months, you find that you're out on your own. So you have to make it work. Then you have to become a nation state. Sovereignty is not something that just drops from the sky. You have to defend it. Armed forces and then foreign affairs, foreign policy, all these are challenges. So an accidental and unnatural nation have to work doubly hard to make sure that it works. The bicentennial that is happening now has triggered uh, reactions from people, right? Both positive and negative. The negative ones, they say that, oh, we're not interested in raffles, you know, why do we celebrate colonialism and what does raffle mean to me? No meaning. But there is another group of people who say that we are trying to find meanings in our own history, what history means to me personally. And that challenge would be an interesting one if Singaporeans could find ways of developing their own understanding of history, then that, could, that would be a way of anchoring or developing deeper identities. Some scholars view Singapore's policy of multiculturalism as an instrument of social control of, and policing of boundaries in the name of the larger public good and harmony. But the inherent dilemmas of a new nation state that grew out of an old commercial city have not gone away. Global competition is given rise to the need to revive the instincts of the open city, notwithstanding the demands of nurturing a local base of citizens. For you, the idea of Singapore is summed up in the phrase, smallness unconstrained. Are you listening to us? Do you know what we want? Are you prepared to um, listen to voices that are different from those that you have heard traditionally? So I think these are new aspirations that are coming up and the needs are very different. You know, these are what we call the millennials or what have you, but they have grown up in an environment that's totally different from my father's generation and even mine. How the leadership relates to that group of people with all these differences will be a challenge, I think. And I think that's, again, the challenge of the times.